Okay, I'm going to call this meeting to order at 6.34, and we are going to start off this evening uh, with our Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of agenda is actually a public hearing. Uh, this is in regards to the House bill that was passed about two weeks ago uh, in Concord. It's Bill 329. And the purpose of the public hearing is in regards to ratifying the voting in March because of the snowstorm and uh, different towns having their voting on different days. The, uh, those in the thought that this would be the easiest way to clean everything up so everybody would be on the same page. So I'll accept a motion to uh, open our public hearing. So moved. Second. All those in favor of opening the public hearing, say aye. 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 <coughs> Does the public have anything to add uh, or to comment on the vote in March? Maybe so. I'll entertain a motion to close our public hearing. So moved. Second. All those in favor of closing the public hearing say aye. 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 Uh, is there anyone who would like to make a motion to ratify the election results? Yeah, do you have the wording? I have some wording. If you don't, what would this wording I have some wording? This has to be signed out. Oh, I'll make a motion to move to legalize, ratify, and confirm all actions, votes, and proceedings taken in the town of Winchester, New Hampshire on March 21st, which was the date of the town vote due to the postponement of such actions on March 14th because of inclement weather. I'll second. Is there any discussion? All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 <coughs> <coughs> you didn't catch all that? <laughs> Next on our agenda is citizens' comments. Yes, sir. Sherry McDaniel Thomas, not a citizen, uh, but president of the Winchester Teachers Association. On behalf of the association and professional staff, uh, we want to support a fellow teacher whose plight you will hear about later tonight. It's a terrible situation, and we would really like to move forward with some several things, but tonight's issue, I think, is that we would like to donate our sick days uh, to her, so that would be one less thing she had to worry about. So I just wanted to make that statement. <coughs> Anything else for citizens' comments? Yes, Robert? Let me just say I have the utmost respect for all of you. You worked very hard last year on the budget. I was here during all those hours. I know what you did. I'm Robert Lustak, a selectman, and I'm alternate on the planning board to Chan Stevens. And on Monday, Southwest Regional came down and went over data with us. This is population and housing analysis. And we started off going through this and it didn't seem like a big thing. So we got to median family income for Winchester in 2000 was 60,478. By 2010, it was 45,000. And then a few pages later, the ball dropped. According to census data, of owner-occupied units in town, 40.5% of those households pay more than 30% of their yearly income to housing costs. Of the rental units, 
percent pay more than 30 percent of their yearly income to housing costs. In total, these are their words, 42 percent of all households in Winchester face housing costs that are not affordable. When I mentioned to the person who came down that come June, we're facing a seven dollars per thousand tax increase. She kind of went white and said, oh, you guys are going way over 50% on affordability. So I just wanted to bring that to your attention that there's a storm brewing. I don't think it's going to turn out real good. Thank you. Thank you, Robert. Anybody else for citizens' comments? Okay, we will move on on our agenda. We have some minutes to approve second readings for March 23rd, March 30th, and April 6th. <coughs> I will make a motion to approve the March 23rd, 2017 minutes as written. Can you just the one at a time or do you want to go on the third? Uh, one at a time in case there's any discussion. Already. Okay, I'll second that motion. I think um, I need to make one correction, I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, it's on the first page of the 23rd, March 23rd, and it's under the school calendar. Uh, Kate Bazan suggested that the open house be scheduled on Friday and then school start on Monday. I believe I said the open house be scheduled on Monday and then the first case will be on Tuesday. Oh, okay. You said not Friday. Not Friday. Okay. Or not Friday. Okay. Any discussion? Any further discussion for the 23rd? All those in favor of approving the minutes for March 23rd with corrections say aye. 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 March 30th is our next date. Second. Is there any discussion? All those in favor of approving the minutes for March 30th, 2017, say aye. 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 And the last is April 6th. Discussion? All those in favor of approving the minutes for April 6th, 2017, say aye. 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 And we just have a first reading for our last meeting, which was yeah. on April 13th. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Next on our agenda is old business. Mr. Chairman, I was wondering if I might be able to introduce something. This is not on our agenda, but it's similar to what uh, Mrs. McDaniel Thomas was talking about. Um, I will call it a compassionate donation procedure. If I look at our Section 91A, I do believe it would be prudent to go into non-public because Section C, under Section C, because it would um, it would address this situation. Would it be under negotiations too? Or? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I just want to make sure we go on the right mm -hmm. I, For this particular situation, um, but we're not we're not changing anything. Yeah. We're adding something. Okay. Okay. 
So C? C, I think, is more appropriate. Would anybody like to make the motion to go to non-public under C? Yeah, I'll make a motion to enter into non-public 91-83C. Second. Roll call. Aye. 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 Uh, we are now back in public. The board made a motion to go back in public in the other room. And while in non-public, we discussed personnel. I don't think there's any reason to seal any minutes. Uh, I will make a motion to accept the compassionate donation procedure presented by our superintendent, Ken Lewis. Second. Is there any questions? <coughs> yeah. um, so the compassionate donation procedure is um, a method by which one employee can donate earned time or annual leave to another employee who needs extended time off from work due to serious health condition, um, uh, for them, for an immediate family member. It's applicable for people who have exhausted or may exhaust all applicable paid time off. The compassionate donation is donated directly to an individual in need. It is not donated to a common donation bank. <coughs> There's a couple of criteria for eligibility. Um, in the event that the employee exhausts all applicable paid time off, Winchester School employee, employees may donate some of their accumulated earned time off or annual leave to help ease the burden of the employee who would otherwise need to take time off from work without pay. <coughs> Such donation of accumulated earned time or annual leave uh, will be, er, er, excuse me, uh, will be, I'm going to triple You're right. Right. Thank you so much. <laughs> it's just going to be a, a terrible issue. Um, eligibility, any full or part-time status employee is eligible to receive or donate time. Um, they have to, the eligible employee must uh, meet the following criteria. They must be on an approved family and medical leave um, that is anticipated to require the employee to be absent from work for a minimum of 30 consecutive calendar days. The days may only be used for the specific FMLA approved time, exhausted or expect to exhaust all earned annual leave time and must be facing a minimum of five days of unpaid leave. They must be expected to return to work for a period of at least 30 calendar days following the leave. The employee may donate time and receive time in the same fiscal year and the receiver may not transfer compassionate donation to another receiver. Uh, another eligibility in this particular case, uh, the days will be approved in increments of 10 days with a maximum of 90 days per year. Um, and these terms may be revisited. So the, the gist of it is the uh, vote had, the board has made a motion and there's a second on the table to allow a uh, compassionate donation procedure to go forward. Um, I think that was on the minds of many of these teachers here in this room. So this is not the sick bank, this is your ability to donate uh, your time as you see fit, and it will be handled um, with a uh, specific form and uh, you know, clearly at your own discretion and in an anonymous manner. This is, we are explaining the, the difference. Of but the difference with the sick bank, as you know, if you read the contract, it says just the individual teacher. This is something completely different to be a, a family member or that. What you say? Sure. Yes? Um, did I hear that when the person comes back, they need to be back for 30 consecutive days, or like work days? Um, like if it someone's says expect sick? to return for a period of at least 30 calendar days following the leave. Not consecutive. Okay. Not consecutive. <laughs> right. So if it's, exactly, if it's June, whatever, and it's one day, and then, okay. yeah. If I said consecutive, I don't know. No. Okay, there's a motion made and there's a second. Is there any other discussion? All those in favor of the compassionate donation procedure drafted by Mr. Lewis, our superintendent, say aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. All right, continuing. Uh, old business. Uh, function of business manager and building principles. A, had a change of responsibilities. Can you report on this 
since that change happened, or I think it's I think it's still in the uh, the beginning stages of construction. I think there's needs to continue to have some conversation of what exactly our expectations for individuals uh, each, each place. I think that's a sit down meeting to discuss. I don't know how far we would get with this right now. But, um, both parties should be on board. There should be no ambiguity of what one is supposed to do and what it's, what it's not supposed to do. Anytime there's a change <coughs> switch, there's always going to be a lot of ambiguity to begin with. But I think as we go forward, that we sit down and perhaps script it out of the office. Okay. okay. And our, our, our managers and principal getting together, scheduled meetings. I don't think there's been scheduled meetings yet. No. As I think anyone <coughs> in this room would tell you, finding time is the secret. So what will happen here, plus I was away for a few days too, so there really hasn't been a whole lot of time after that conversation. I think it was the next day that, that I left. And so I've only been back for a couple of days. So I certainly haven't sat down with my own communication. I know that some communication we got was doing what uh, expectations is generally understand, I think there's some nuances that have to be with well, you Let's uh, bring it back into business again for our next board meeting. New business, our uh, superintendent and student services position. Uh, we currently have one person in the role of superintendent and student services, and the board has been talking about the uh, superintendent job description. Also acknowledging the super the student services position, and in fact, the board has a work session coming up tomorrow wow. at five o'clock to discuss the same. Yeah. So I'd like to see uh, superintendent and student services position be brought back at our next board meeting under old business as well. What's the student services position? Special education director. Special education. Val and Ben's paragraphs for um, the superintendent job description that we've been working on. Steve, if you could get yours to me by tomorrow, I'd appreciate it. Yeah. And then I do have one already done. Can you send me an electronic copy? All right, I gave the board uh, homework since our last meeting. You can turn it in now. Board goals for the next year. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I thought about well, I thought about some board goals. Um, I would like to see over the uh, next year that uh, you know I was talking about the uh, superintendent job description. Uh, I think we need to go through uh, most of our job descriptions uh, ASAP uh, as soon as possible. You know, we're starting about admin. We're talking administration. I'm talking about administration. I'm talking about. Uh, Business manager, principal, <coughs> our, um, our assistant principal and curriculum coordinator. Um, I, I think we are discovering as we go through the job description for our superintendent that they just haven't been updated in a long, long time. And that, you know, it's not fair to the district, and more importantly, it's not fair to the person who's in that role. Great. And it's up to the board to make sure that those job descriptions are up to date and accurate. And we have to make sure. That um, that they are so. So I, I would like to make sure that we are continuing to work on these job descriptions. And you know we're going to get we're going to get busy over the next couple of months, I'm sure. And especially as we head towards the fall, maybe we can get these a couple more job descriptions job descriptions done before say the month of September. We had talked about doing a board retreat. Um, so that was one goal that I would like to see happen. Um, we started that conversation last year, and I'd, I'd like to see it happen this year, you know, an opportunity to be off site and talk about some of these goals in, um, in a different setting. Mm -hmm. um, I, one, one of the goals that I had thought about was um, I'd like to see some longer term planning, and some you know, three to five year kind of planning 
with regard to building and finance. I don't want to say a master plan because I don't want to be daunted by um, the all-encompassing master plan, but having some some idea of where we're going in the next several years and having a goal to get there. That's one thing I thought. I was thinking about um, other things too. You know, we were talking about one of the big topics that the that has been a part of the school over the past couple of months, uh, over the past year, has been space. Uh, the school and the board has made a lot of effort um, to make sure the third floor of the Thayer building has been cleared out and is up to date in code. Um, we're going to be making some changes over the summer on where offices are and who our classrooms are. And we, we have to make sure that we are using the space that we have uh, most effectively. And we know we have the third floor of the Thayer building to use in some way, shape, or form. You know, we talked about you know, talked to our superintendent about maybe some ideas of how that space can bring in revenue to this district. I know it can happen. Um, we now have a an architect as a part of our budget for the next year. We have to get some outside help, some thoughts from somebody outside who has experience in, in taking space and making the best use of it. We have to get the reports from these people to see what they want. Question? Yes. Are all the rooms on what you call the second floor, those are all being used across from Mrs. Tomala's room, for example? Um, Question Mrs. Tomala's room. Yeah. Yes, that, yeah. <laughs> yep. yeah. Th those rooms are being used. There is one room that's used as a pull-out room. Uh, about two doors up from the SAU, so we still do use that. So, in the middle school way, from the girls' room down towards the gym, going towards the gym, away from the offices and towards the gym, from the girls' room, girls' and boys' rooms are across yeah, yeah, the hall, science room, girls' boys. Yeah. Okay. On the girls' room side, there are how many rooms? Three, and they're all being used. Two it's rooms. Two rooms. Two rooms. Um, and there's a there's a large closet storage. There's Mrs. Lounge's room. There's Mrs. Corsa's room. Then you turn the corner, and there's a large closet. Should not be used as a classroom. So there are there are no rooms on the second floor that are used as that are available to be used as classrooms. One. There's one room down, as I said, a couple of doors up one from the room. SAU. And then on the first floor, by the gym, on that floor, Okay. Is, are there any rooms on that floor? All those rooms are being on All the those rooms are being used. Right now. That's what time is. I know one big goal of mine, and I brought it up a few times, that's why jumped on the policy committee is updating the policy also along with updating, updating job descriptions. The policy hasn't really been thoroughly gone through in a while. So I think that's one that's one big goal of mine. But also another big goal of mine is uh, could be another long term thing like you mentioned, but uh, finding a better way to handle revenue. Finding new revenues, grants doing something to, to help offset some of the some of the costs. That's a big thing in my book. Yes, Val. Uh, my other thing is board communication with the community as a whole, with the faculty. Um, I'm not so sure the website is up and running and, and good. I think there can be communication um, scheduled, you know, nights that people can get together and just talk about things. I know there's cast, but a lot of people can't meet during the day. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe an evening time that is available to more people to meet, but I think communication of what the board is doing, what its ideas are, you know, if you're talking about the third floor, is the town aware of what might happen up there? Or mm -hmm. I just think there is a board Facebook page. Hmm? There is a board Facebook page to use for that sort of thing. I use it just as a separate board web page. Um, 
I don't, yes, I guess I am. What's the board up to? What you send home a, a newsletter from the school? Should the school board be sending home a, a newsletter from the school board saying what's going on? Once every three months or something? Mm. I know, I know there's been uh, more communication as of late. I know videotaping the meetings has definitely helped. I know that there's a lot of people um, watching the YouTube videos online, I've heard. Um, so I, I think that's a step in the right direction, but I understand what you're talking about. Uh, Is this available? Yeah, it's on YouTube. Online. Online. Yep. Okay. okay. <coughs> I, feel like, I feel like you mentioned something about policies. We actually did have a policy review about four years ago. We sent it to the New Hampshire School Board Association. Page 1200 bucks, we haven't done. So at least it has been done. It's only been right. No, it has been done. It's been a while, but it has been done. Yeah, I, I mean, I think the purpose of us sending it to the New Hampshire School Board Association was to make sure that we had them all mm -hmm. proper oh, absolutely. But um, I understand what Ben's saying, too. I think some of those policies have to be gone through and made applicable to Winchester specifically. Yes, that was updated, a big issue. And updated to what is going on here at the Winchester School. You know, excuse me, but that's an example of what I mean. Um, I knew that that was available on Cheshire Cable TV, Okay. but did not know that, that you it was could online. get it online or you could get it through YouTube or however <coughs> you get it. Mm -hmm. So, um, call me dumb, I don't know, but I'd like to, those are the kind of things that I'm talking about. Right. I would guess there are other people that don't know. Any more discussion? I mean, I don't know if we can just set it up like every two months or three months, we bring <coughs> out four goals on our agenda just so they don't fall by the wayside because something's gonna happen and we'll start to focus on another thing and certain items get pushed aside. Mm -hmm. I just don't wanna, I don't wanna see that happen. I wanna make sure that the board sticks to what it says. We could do a work session or uh, with Barrett, maybe, um, and develop more of a plan for some of these goals that we've talked about and bring those back under old business to address on a regular basis. Because just sticking them on the agenda will, will help us remember that we talked about them but won't necessarily progress any of the goals. That is true. It's a step. It's a step in the right direction. <coughs> <coughs> if we invite Barrett down for that, I'd like to invite Bud also, Bud Fish. Mm -hmm. um, there was members up there. I've had a few conversations with him. And, you know, he's very knowledgeable about a lot of the board goals and the kind of okay. future planning. And, actually, and he actually helped write the original, or the newest update of the right to know about things. Well, as my, as my role of chair, I would make it my responsibility to make sure that we concentrate on goals and we don't forget. All right. Okay. <clears throat> All right, next on our new business, the SAU photocopier. I actually have it in my business report if you want to wait. You want to wait? Yeah. All right. We'll get back to that. Uh, teacher contracts, Jim. I have teacher contracts waiting here. <coughs> here. Uh, waiting signature. Uh, I would suggest we wait do it, otherwise we're going to see folks just sitting around watching their sign. <laughs> they are here and ready. This takes a motion. Um, you already motion. Uh, sorry, to to sign, motion. To sign it. Yes. When you, back in April, when you agreed to renew the contracts, this is just the paperwork. These, these guys already have. Okay. Yeah. That just has the dollar amount on there? Yeah. Which has been double checked. Excellent. Usually you do it all at once. Usually when he does the nominations, he breaks the contracts. So the motion serves both purposes. We didn't have the actual teacher's comments. <laughs> oh, look, it's your name on all of them. <laughs> all right. Well, why don't we move on to the uh, financial report? Huh? That was fine. Good. Okay. Look at that. Here's the host. I did not hold on to the social studies. <laughs> oh. 
So we have for you tonight a payroll manifest, two accounts payable manifests, and you've previously approved two payroll manifests and accounts payable manifests. So there's six altogether. Um, I did uh, have in there for this uh, manifest is the Keen High second semester billing. Um, I did break it down by grade so that you can see how many full-time students and part-time students are listed for you. And we do have the funds to pay it. Thank you, Tom. 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 Yes. And I will make a motion to approve the accounts payable manifest for May 5th. This is specifically the key tuition for the amount of $1,267,109.70. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Val. Is there any discussion? <coughs> All those in favor of approving the accounts payable manifest for May 5th, 2017 in the amount of $1,267,109.70 say aye. 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 Four yes, one opposed. One, one. No, he didn't. No, he didn't oppose. I said aye. He just, oh, you did? He just begrudgingly said aye. Oh, was it begrudgingly? It was. Yeah. It was like he's yeah. holding it. It wasn't a yay, yippee, aye. Yeah, he was not excited about it. All right, go And Alicia did go, we had talked about this just in finance real quick, and she went through, um, they double checked every last yep. applicable student to ensure <coughs> they were full time. Yep. Uh, make a motion to approve the uh, second accounts payable manifest, May 5th, 2017, in the amount of $19,165.16. Second. I have no problem. Is there any discussion? All those in favor of approving the accounts payable manifest for May 5th, 2017, in the amount of $19,165.16, say aye. 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 The final one is a payroll manifest for May 5th, the amount of $192,867.40. Second. This is payroll? Yes. Is there any discussion? All those in favor of approving the accounts payable manifest for May 5th, 2017, in the, in the amount of $192,867.40, say aye. 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 And if we could get our, into the notes, our amounts that were previously approved, do you have a, you, thank you. Health insurance? Yes, I have two health insurance um, items tonight. One is from Health Trust. So Health Trust is actually changing their plans. Um, but if you, we have a plan that is in a collective bargaining agreement, we can, uh, with the board's authorization to have the superintendent write a letter extending the plan as is before the changes go into effect, um, they would most likely honor that request. So right now, our teachers contract goes until 2018, and in 2017, they're anticipating a change to the plan. So one year. But it's during our current But it's during our current contract, and because of that, we haven't had the opportunity to, to renegotiate. It's actually better to keep the existing plans as oh, is. So what we're looking for is for the board to make a motion to authorize the superintendent to write a letter to extend the plan as is until contract negotiation, which is the 2018 annual. Any questions from the board? Do we want to make that motion? I will make a motion to authorize the superintendent to write a letter extending plans as is for the, do we have the 
give a date or just until contract negotiation. Yeah, it's 2018. Or you can say until contract negotiation. Until contract negotiation. Is there a second? One second, no. Is there any discussion? All those in favor of the motion, <coughs> authorize the superintendent to write a letter to the health insurance company. Say aye. 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 Yes. New Hampshire. Is this? So this is the New Hampshire Interlock an Interlocal Trust is the health insurance for the um, non-collective bargaining agreement employees. So unfortunately, health trust didn't have a return this year of money to set back. If you remember, in years past, we've had a return from health trusts yep. that we've given back to the actual employees when we receive the money. And unfortunately, sometimes it's been years later that we receive the money, but. Um, uh, so NHIT is returning to the school district $8,195.12. Mm -hmm. um, this indicates money from the fiscal year June 2015, and we need the board to decide on how that's going to be returned, and if it's going to be returned just to the district. So you can get a one-time check to be issued in August 2017. You can have a return applied as a premium against the August bill, or you can have a credit to monthly contribution spread equally over each monthly payment, which would be in July 2017 through June of 2018. So that's one decision that has to be made. Typically, we either have a check sent to us and then we redistribute that money out to the employees, or we can have it offset our existing bill going forward. Which would mean it wouldn't be returned to the people who had paid it, it would be returned to the people who are participating those people could be different between the different years. But it's up to the board to decide. <coughs> Keeping in mind, 85% of that amount is the school's amount of regardless. I'm sorry. So we would, your suggestion is we would use that to offset future premium. You could, yeah. yeah that's kind of the option. Yeah. That's what I would be in favor of. That's what I would be in favor of as well. Yeah. So having the return applied as a premium holiday to the contributions beginning in August 2017. Yeah. Yes. Okay. All right. Um, the copier. So the copier died and it was revived. DNR it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the copier is a Xerox copier. It's about eight years old. It does color copies. It has the finisher, so it has the staplers, the whole punch, does everything but book book format. Um, it did die. They gave us a temporary for a week or two weeks while they took our copier and they cleaned it, refinished it. Um, it was back, I think, on Monday, working, which is nice. It is making a sound, which is very concerning. Um, so. In the essence of, it's eventually going to die again. Um, we do have two quotes uh, for replacement of the copier. So I'll hand them to you, I guess. Uh, They will probably not run the renew the servicing on that machine for a whole other year. I'm just saying. You know, they put more than a thousand dollars worth of work into the machine and parts. So probably when it's up in July, they're gonna go, ah. no. So Conway, if you look at the Conway quote, did everybody get to I end up I ended up with an extra, so I just want to make sure well, they we need that okay. here. So looking at the Conway quote, um, currently the machine does 75 black and white copies per minute. It's just, so it's a very fast machine. We might not necessarily need that type of fast of a machine up in the SAU. That's usually like 300,000 copies a year. Ours does a lot less than that. Um, so 
Like if you're looking at a 48 month lease, $3,830 a year, 36 months, 45, 38, 34, and a three year Conway installment plan to purchase one would be $4,399 a year. It's very budgetable. I would rather do, instead of a monthly lease, purchase the machine. Mm -hmm. Just because we already have a monthly lease, there's another invest. <coughs> another bill, more interest. And then the other option is a Toshiba, which matches, um, I think the town has the Toshiba machines. The Conway <coughs> Club from Conway, it matches the other machines that we have in the building. I think Val had asked you, from a technology standpoint, is it easier to manage machines that are all the same? I think you said yes, that makes sense. <laughs> From a technology standpoint, it might be easier. The Toshiba. No, the no, Conway. Conway. Yeah. So the quote we have from Conway is the you said the 75 page per minute. It is, and I'd like to get so they're, they're not exact quotes. They're exact quotes, but they don't match each other. So the yeah. Toshiba is 55 per minute, right? Which is thousands less. Yeah. So I'd like to at least get another quote from Conway that matches the 55 pages per minute, so that you can see. Yeah. Anyway, you shake it though, it's probably yeah. going to be right around 12. It's going to be 12,000 though. Yeah. yeah. And I think I had budgeted about 35 to 4,000 for next year. So that would cover the one one of the three year lease uh, payments, or even not a lease payment, but just a purchase year and a purchase plan. Mm -hmm. yeah. how, how long has this one lasted? Eight years. Wow. Alicia, I see that the Toshiba is from Westmoreland and Conway. Nashua mm -hmm. seems to be the closest to you get service. So with Conway, and they both are similar service, at least I'm being promised from Toshiba, or the office systems of Vermont is from West Berlin. Um, but Conway is here within 24 hours. <coughs> Most of the time they're here the same day <coughs> to service the machine. I think it's been usually like two hours. Guys, yeah. so there's no there. And Toshiba promised the same, that they would be here within 24 hours. So they, they have to service it. So when we when we're sold a new machine, whether it's lease or purchase, they have to service it for ten years by law. Although whatever the rate is at that time, that's what you pay. But they can't not not service your machine. So just so information for now. I'm not looking for a vote on it. <coughs> um, Update us on the noises. Okay, we'll do. So the grant opportunity I talked to you about in the last meeting, the Advocates for Healthy Youth that Steve Piscatello and I wrote quickly that morning, we did receive that $1,000 grant for the preschool playground. So we were very excited about that. And we had work done last week, or two weeks ago, by the uh, Town Highway Department to put in a new sandbox. It cost us $70 and I think 33 cents to have that sandbox done by the town's assistance. I was going to go purchase sand um, to fill the sandbox, and he had um, five tons of sand donated by Lane Construction. <coughs> Preschool is working on a thank you card, and he had said we would do that. Because um, I found out that would, that would have been 225 40 pound bags of sand that I would have had to get. So I'm very appreciative that Lane donated that. Um, in the meantime, though, we did discover that the, the whole place structure out there needs major renovation. I don't know if you've had a chance. It's rotted somewhat. It's tightened up. It's tightened up. But eventually it needs to be replaced, would you say? At some point. Okay. That's good news. And then for Energy Committee facilities, um, just an update to the Eversource grant. We did have that com conversation with Eversource on the phone with the electrician. Um, the questions were answered, so we did sign the application and send it in. So we only have to do what was on there that was being funded by Eversource, which was um, the new lights, for like outdoor lights and ramps and such. Uh, the town has contacted us for a couple different meetings that they have going on, so it's nice to partner with the town for um, energy and facilities. They have an emergency management meeting next Tuesday at the town hall. Um, do you know anything more about that? Is it still it's Tuesday? It's Tuesday the 9th, it's, at the, it's actually at the police station. Police station. Yeah, it's not at the town hall. Uh, I think that one starts at 9.30 on the morning. In the morning? Yeah. 
And I sent the invite to both Link and Jim, so you guys should have that in the calendar. Yeah. It's in the police station. There's representatives from well, the direction of school, select board, fire department, police department, highway and water. Um, it's, it's led by, uh, I can't remember her name, but the lady from Southwest Region, or Southwest, yeah, Regional Planning. They, they do it. Just to update the emergency operation plan. Are you going to be there, Ben? Yes. Okay. That's good. Okay. And then, and then the select board and the fire department. So that's why I, I asked if we could get any current like or somebody from the school to attend it. She'll come forward and send it three places. <laughs> Uh, well, one more thing was Bob Hayden from Peterborough is going to be speaking at next week's select board meeting, and we were invited to attend because um, he, he has actually <coughs> provided us quotes every year for our electricity rates. He's who we locked in with last December okay. for electricity, but he's going to be talking about solar power <coughs> and electricity rates. In case you guys are interested, and on April 26th, I went over to Banana to open up the bus. Bid, not bid, bid. <laughs> and the white one is the updated one. Well, this is the actual bid. But in essence of saving the life of the copier, I printed you the white form. The gold form is, left, is the current contract that we're in now. And so first student was the only one that bid. Um, we had sent the invitation out to other locations. Um, one actually sent back a request saying thanks, but we're not interested. It's really tough. I haven't done all the analysis to the numbers yet, but it was basically a 2% increase from last year. What did we budget? Yeah. Yeah. And this bid includes all of our bus needs. It does, and they separated them out. I mean, all of the bus needs that First Student has already provided us in the past. This doesn't mean <coughs> all of the special ed runs that we do with other transportation companies. So we use three other transportation companies for special ed transportation. Right. So, so this is comparable. So the gold is this year. Yeah. The white would be next year. And it would be a three-year contract. And we'd be increasing the number of days to some of the runs. And there is a fuel escalator charge still budgeted in there. It's two seventy five. <coughs> well, here it is, right in front of us. Uh, we have three years to get our transportation. Uh, department up and running. When is uh when is the big due back? I mean I would say within the 30 days would be a reasonable time. Okay. You can still think about it. You guys can look at this book if you'd like. Mm -hmm. You have a copy of the book? You sit and I have some updated well, information to, to discuss. Too, just no, they can accept it. <coughs> Bob and Beyond by special education, students and teachers 
they go the extra mile in three days. So again, I know we're just coming off the teacher appreciation week, but it couldn't be more appropriate than, uh, than for the group of people you see before you, the people who work in here. We do need more paraprofessionals. We reach out as much as we can. Uh, we, we tried Facebook, we tried the newsletter. Uh, if you know of anybody, think of anybody, if anybody watching this knows of anybody who like uh, Physicians, professional like apply for it, please let us know. Some good news, I got information from Ruth, I'm sorry, from uh, Santina Thibodeau, sorry. And it reads, Dear Ms. Lewis, the New Hampshire Department of Education has determined through a general supervision desk audit review that the Winchester School District had a 100% compliance level relative to 34CFR. 100%? 100%. Transition children from family-centered early supports and services to preschool special education for the July 1, 2015, October 31, 2015 report period. That's good news. That's, um, that's a pat on the back to the road. It's supposed to work on that. It's a topic that we think we need to have. And I have. We are in May. There's 30 something days left. And I have a letter that needs to go to the board. For a child asking for permission, the parent asking for permission to allow her daughter to remain at Winchester School at the end of the year. The student is in the eighth grade and will be graduating in 20 <coughs> That's right, she would go to another school and graduate with one student, so she may not. For me, that's a no-brainer. I think it's a no-brainer. What is the potential concern or issue with that? Well, we, we don't have to. The board can say, no, sorry, you live in another she district. Moved. That's, that's okay. that. Yeah, she's moved. moved. Is the, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Is the yeah. Oh, oh, yes, the, trend, the parents will bring the child to the school. Yeah. yeah. Anybody would like to make that motion? I'll make a motion. I don't think you have to mention the name. No. no. Thank you. To a second student question. Yes. Yeah. There was a second by Steve. Any other discussion? I didn't hear the motion. <laughs> Could you be more specific? <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't hear it at all. He didn't really. I didn't hear it. Oh, yeah. Okay. okay. Don't worry. worry. <coughs> My motion was to allow the student to stay till the end of the year. Okay. Do we need to say and graduate? No. School year, end of the school year. Yes. Two five. Be more specific. Would be until eighth grade graduation. Eighth grade graduation. Which is prior to the end of the school year. Mm -hmm. You okay with that? Sure. Okay. All those in favor of the motion to allow the eighth grader to remain at the school until eighth grade graduation, say aye. 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 Excellent, thank you very much. Um, uh, a couple weeks ago, I brought um, a lead screening policy uh, to our policy committee. I just wanted to bring it to the board. Lead is a, is a big deal. You know, uh, back in, I think it was before 78, kids would eat lead, it's affected, it's affected their brains. Uh, up until sixth grade, you don't have a certain protection around your brain on the inside. And uh, after six it develops, but kids that ate, yeah, eat lead and it affects them. Claremont School Board um, has approved, I think the first in the state, of a lead screening policy. And I'm not looking for an approval of a policy. For those of you who didn't get it, I'm including it in there for you, but please take a look and please consider that. I mean, basically, it has to show up when we get the information from the child. Doctors will have to say the child has been screened for lead. Should be part of it anyways. Right, so the yes, universal plan. Exactly. Yeah. So, at the end of every vacation, we have life check. Right to. This time, we want to applaud the uh, nurses at Applewood. They came by on Mars and they went through this 
tools that shout out. We certainly appreciate them and our thoughts of that. That will be our last lights check of the uh, year, our last presentation. Also, Revision Solar, everybody has a solar company. Revision Solar is the next solar company who responded to the inquiry regarding our solar power for the school. They're interested, come talk to us, just like other solar companies have been. I've been reaching out to these other folks. And Revision is the next one. And they're interested in meeting the week of the 14th. That's not this week, but the soon week. If anyone's interested, let me know. I can set a specific time. I'd like to get, I'm going to bring this to the selectmen on Wednesday. Uh, ask if they can get together, similar to what we've done before. If anyone's interested, please let me know, and I can let them know. Some days may be easier than others. Teachers, you're welcome to join us as well. Talk about Basically, we're going to use the solar power instead to create electricity. It's 2017. We can harness the sun. Does uh, Ben and Steve interested in being a part of that? Oh, yeah, definitely. Okay. Definitely. Are there days of the week that work better than others? The only days that don't work for me are Wednesday nights. Mm -hmm. Thursdays are bad for me. Okay. Day. Afternoon, doesn't matter, Steve, or look yourself. Any, any, any time of Thursdays, really? Okay. Any time yourself, Thursdays. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Uh, my next item was the item that everyone's talking about, the emergency response that uh, I had in the town hall, too. I don't know why. <coughs> yeah. It, oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, so it was a little I'll take it. Just in case it says it. And I knew that, too. I knew it was at the police station. I'd been there before. It's actually a very good uh, process. You determine. It used to be if Yankee, um, Vermont Yankee got a leak or explosion or whatever, they, they monitor the wind going and when are you going to evacuate the school? Uh, 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 Selectman this approaching week, Lindsay, you're up. Wednesday? Wednesday, yeah. Wednesday evening. 7.30. Um, as timely as today's headlines, the House voted on and passed SB 191, which is full funding for full day kindergarten. We already have full day kindergarten. Is during a full house session, the bill uh, would provide funding for all communities who currently have full day kindergarten. So it could be some money coming our way. It passed, it has to go to the Senate. We'll see what happens after. <coughs> That's a good thing. That's a good thing. And then my absolute last appeal for Box Tufts for Education. <laughs> the last you ever hear me talk about this. About two months ago, I put something on this thing called Facebook. Maybe you've heard about this. <laughs> And I just said, you know, send me your box tops. You know, send them to my house, send them to the fire department, or to the, the church, right? Just the send them to me. And I did it once. I did it once. And, and labels I got. <laughs> These labels, and I'll show you them just because a visual is always good. That's why I brought them. These I them labels. Right, you have to send them in first. This came. Of these labels that were sent to me, 16 are mine from the Progresso Suits or the Green Giant, whatever I want. 16 out of all of these. They came in. All I did was put it on Facebook, imploring everyone for the last time to just write it out once, send me your box tops. So let's do a little multiplication. Each label is worth 10 cents. So one page of these, five bucks. I've got 22 pages here, $110, but doing almost nothing. There's 10 months in a school year, divided by two months since I did it, I do it all again. Say there's five collections. Five collections times a buck ten, I'm sorry, $110, $550 from one person, one. Two people, 1100 bucks. Four people, two, you can follow those, right? 2200 10 people, 5000 if we had 100 persons, 100, that's a fourth, <coughs> fourth of the students in our school, or less than all the staff members, $55,000 that we could make from that. It's that easy. It's trash. They're trash to you and I, but to the school, they're gold. And I want to tell you something. Well, how much money can we make? Well, I can tell you one thing that the Maple Avenue Elementary School in Claremont, New Hampshire made $6,150. Up to date, right now, our present amount is $908. Again, $6,150 versus 
108. The number one, okay, the number one school in the country out of Charlotte, North Carolina. Any idea? Anyone take a venture? Box tops, trash. You know how much they made? $101,499. It's money here, the question is, is just what we do it. That's the bottom line, however we look at it. So that's it, I mean, if we had just the 55,000, there's your new bleaches, portion of heating oil, four students tuition to Keene High School, we, this is money that comes our way. So if we can get folks to do it, great, if we don't, <coughs> Last box comes. And if, that's it. If I had one of those papers that I could have made it and put them on, I would not forget to throw them away. Okay. Those would be pretty good. We, we can get you. No, but I mean, that, that to me, when I saw them on that paper, I thought, wow, if I just had to stick them there, then I wouldn't have that paper clip them and lose them and forget yeah. them. And that's, that's a fair yeah. comment. Yeah. And they know that. That's clever they little things. They okay. have a go team. Is a, uh, I think there's a thing. I just put them in a little sandwich bag and bring them yeah. in. There's a little box in the middle. Yep. I tried to, but I know <laughs> that some that don't come in because I'm just, I don't have something to So, more homework. Each one of you put on Facebook. Every one of your friends. <laughs> That's it. Go, I need to go to my phone. Okay. Uh, anything else for Jim? <coughs> no. Thank you. Mike. Um, big doings this week is Teacher and Staff Appreciation Week. <laughs> we have had an event each day, um, another event coming up tomorrow. Monday, um, breakfast was provided to staff. Tuesday, um, dessert cart. Wednesday, we had a raffle with um, small gifts of appreciation. Water bottles to the uh, salad bowls were the kid. Um, today was pizza lunch, and tomorrow was Klondike bars. Oh, I've heard that's a problem today. Very popular. I haven't been through it yet, but I'm looking forward to it. Did you know there were nine different kinds of Klondike bars? I had no idea until we did this. Really? Right. I, I think that's the one you said. Yeah. I yeah. 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 What kind of tomorrow is that? It's kind of one. We'll have to fly The other thing I wanted to mention was um, tomorrow, as well as every Friday, um, I think many of you are aware, but in case you weren't, we have Jeans Day, and um, Friday staff are allowed to wear jeans, um, but it's also used as a fundraiser for. Uh, many different funds from nature's classroom to emergency funds for particular families in need. And um, I wanted to kind of surprise the staff uh, that a few of us this evening have talked. Um, that tomorrow, as many of you know, tomorrow's um, Gene Day funds will go to the Islin family. Um, but we also challenge you tomorrow and get the word out tonight after the meeting that we challenge you that the administrative team will match your funds up to $500. Ooh, thank you. Well, thank you. That's great. Um, science testing. Uh, eighth graders started science ECAP testing this week. Actually, they've been started and completed science ECAP testing this week. So, two days of regular tests and then one day of an inquiry task and um, responding to the inquiry task. I understand it was um, a lot of work, but the students were putting a lot of effort into it. Uh, they reported their brains were tired when they were done. Um, <laughs> teachers were impressed with some students who tend not to put in a lot of work into writing tasks who were doing a really nice job on that. And uh, lots of kids reported that the task was kind of fun. So. And testing it to prove it. High grades from an eighth grade. Yeah, <laughs> right, right. Uh, so we hope that that translates to results improving as well. Uh, we also hope they score the test this year. They don't always do that for the science test. Wonderful. <laughs> a lot of effort. Yeah. Okay. All right, does anybody anything else for Michael Bell? All right.
Moving along. Committee reports. <coughs> There's nothing for budget committee. Joint law spend. I would love to schedule something pretty soon for joint law. There is a one already scheduled May 16th. May 16th? At 3.30, I believe. Okay. I thought I think the last thing they did. I didn't see it on there. Double checking. I'm not sure it's on the list, but it's at least on May 16th at 3 30. I think it's on there. Everybody clear with that? Finance? How did finance go? Uh, we did have a brief miscommunication about we're trying to get our finance meetings consistent before every board meeting with one meeting being about an hour before the board meeting and one meeting just being 15 minutes before. Um, so we did have a miscommunication about what time it was posted for today, um, but I did have an opportunity to meet with Alicia briefly. Um, with the last payment of tuition, um, we have left in that particular bank about $280,000 that we know is not going to be needed for tuition. There's other money coming out throughout the, the budget as well that will be more than that, but that's the, the first amount that I kind of wanted to talk about because we brainstormed a few options. You know, what do we want to do with, with some of that money? What was maybe the wish list that was from last year that didn't make it on the budget? You know, we can't really, um, we can't use that funds for staffing because that needs to be something that carries over into the next budget. Uh, but a couple of things that came out were first to, um, to kind of touch base about the computer carts and where we are with the, that particular wish list. You know, do we have one in every grade level? Do you want one in every grade level? Um, and then the second one was one that I've been pushing this year a lot. I talk about it every meeting and that is the buses. And we have an opportunity to use that money to potentially start our plan to purchase a couple of buses. We had discussed starting with a couple of small buses, something that was manageable for us, potentially taking the place of some of our special education transportation, um, as well as you know some of our smaller field trips. Um, our second late bus, having um, alternative late bus opportunities for Keene, or even adding late bus opportunities, not just one day. Um, if we have our own buses, we could have the potential to do that with more consistency. So that is something that I would like to see. Um, Alicia was going to go back and we were gonna go over some of the prior um, costs that we had come up with and the money is there and yep. I think that we should use it for that particular. This so, was a hand up at budget committee, I mean at budget season? Budget season. That Jim put together? Yeah. So one side has all the different types of passenger buses, and then the other side was <coughs> by a whole entire fleet. Yep. Um, you know, we've talked a few times about how starting with an entire fleet is probably, one, not the smartest thing to do because this would be our first go at it, and then, and two, we don't really have, um, you know, something to that extent would, would be a greater part of any of the job descriptions or a job in itself to be a transportation coordinator. So that's not something we want to get into. My, my recommendation is to look at um, two smaller buses, uh, maybe up to you know, between the, you know, maybe one 14 and one greater than 14 where your CDL is required because that will change up, of course, the um, requirements for training of those particular individuals um, that drive. But the money is there, and that is, I'm going to review what that is, and then you can expect to hear a motion from me for those, for that funds. We have to keep in mind that the cost is not just for the, the, the vehicle, but it's also for the hiring or for the potential training for, I mean, would that cost be working or would that come out of next year's budget? <coughs> So that any salaries or operating costs that fuel would come out of the, the operating budget for the year in which those buses would be running. This would just be the initial purchase, purchase. of the equipment. I mean, we could certainly pay the insurance for a year, um, but it's really should be the year in which. I'll agree with that. Yeah. Um, so any startup costs for purchase. Mm -hmm. What was that total figure again? You said that was what, 284? Is that what it was? 
I said 280. We were at approximately 280. Yeah. Yeah, I'd like to see one vehicle that um, someone doesn't need a CDL for, and one vehicle that does need a CDL. Okay. And then 14 I'm and 24, and one is uh, wheelchair yep. accessible, something like that. And then there's the when you talk about the costs for coming years. You know, we're looking at that bus bid. Um, and, and we already have, well, I don't have the budget for next year built in, but we have somewhere to the tune of 500 and some odd thousand dollars in that line for our 18, 19. And we're talking about savings on some transportation where the money for fuel and driver would be made up in there. Oh, we can save money. We would save money. Off those bid lines. Off those bid lines, yes. So that is something that I think the Finance Committee will discuss in follow-up with um, Alicia so that we have some more specific <coughs> figures to bring so that we not only have um, a motion for this current purchase, but also can, can the board will know what the potential costs going into the next year is from that next year's budget. Is that be our goal? Yeah. yeah. Can that, can that, um, that 280 number, can that change dramatically or? Not from this particular line. There will be one more adjustment, um, and the, we've included the sixty thousand, which is what the adjustment needs to be brought back to us. So we're overpaying this bill six by sixty thousand because they have two students listed for the entire year that didn't actually attend there. For Keen. For Keen. So only if we had students that moved in since the bill. And, that was and typically, if you look at the trending of how um, the enrollments have gone, students actually are moving out in the second semester than moving in in the first semester. Hmm. Okay. Uh, and just because this is how my brain works, I don't remember right off. Alicia, do you happen to remember what the current bill rate is right now? Uh, it was originally 280, and it changed to 269, and then he raised it back to 274. So I think the last budget session we were talking 274. Okay. was one more thing. Yes. Also in conversation um, with some of what's going to be left for surplus, um, we had a couple of conversations about some uh, kind of advanced summer programming. Um, we talked about the STEM camp. I think that's slated for the, but that'll be slated for the uh, 17, to me, for the 18, 19, 17, 18? For the 1718 budget, um, but with a, with a little bit of money, we had the conversation. There is a program running for this year in June, so this would be our current budget. Um, and the Cheshire Career Center is running a camp for very. I don't have the flyer in front of me. Um, computer programming. I think there's a couple of other um, math and science related. Uh, classes that students can take and the camp is running for four days at the Treasure Career Center. It's for students entering into sixth, seventh, and eighth grade. Um, and, and, ninth, and ninth grade. Um, it's a half day program and there's been some interest uh, both in, uh, in all of those grades actually and one of the things that came up in conversation in particular was paying for it. It's uh, seventy-five dollars, and the, then of course it's during vacation. Excuse me, it's right after school ends, and there's a concern about potential um, transportation. So I would like to um, have a discussion about uh, putting money towards uh, busing <coughs> and potential scholarships. We figured out in a rough number if we had fifty students who were interested in attending um, to. I think, we, I think we figured this out in full, to completely fund 50 students and bus them to and from the school every day would cost us $2,500. And I think that's okay. money well spent. No, for the week. 50 students for the week. Um, that would ensure 50 students uh, an opportunity to do something a little more in the enrichment. Did I get that number right? Did you see 2,500? Thirty-five hundred just for the. So we talked about. And then a thousand for buses. Twelve. We talked about twelve hundred for. 
You talked about a whole bunch of different numbers. I know, numbers, a whole so different numbers. So that I apologize. Different. I think 50 times 75 is 35. That is 30. So maybe we talk about a full partial fund for 50 did, students? Yeah. Okay, maybe but that's then, what I meant. But then I think we ended with, we should probably fully fund the bus. No, all of it. All of it? Just for the ease of funding. <clears throat> but it's up to you guys. Okay. You know what you what we I like the idea. Like. I mean, maybe you do 25 students. I don't know. Figure out what the cost is, the actual cost is. Mm -hmm. All right. I'll bring a motion back to the next board meeting. Yeah. Do you know what applications for that have to be in there? Uh, don't have it in front of me. So it'd be nice to contact Keen to let them know that if it's a registered student to put it on a list to fill up prior to anybody paying and then having to be refunded. Do you have a general idea of, I mean, you've heard from several students. I had three out of my 10 students in advisory that want to go. Two were planning on paying for one would, would go if it was paid for. Do you have any concerns if there's, I'd like to provide a blanket amount. <coughs> dollars for yeah. four days from 9 to 12 it's and they can pick from six different activities and there's a list of activities so there's like race there's the like the RC cars there's cosmetology there's cooking in the in their culinary arts program there's a CPR babysitting yeah there's a babysitting certificate which is one of my students wants to go after that is there a big interest among the kids I know I know in my advisory I've had interest from, from my own student and from several of his no, friends. Yeah, so just, yeah, I would say that there is some. Um, and I had another student who would go, but couldn't get transportation. So if the transportation was provided, that might be a fourth student that I would have. Is this the same program from last summer that we I, had some students going to? Yes. They did not have a choice though, right? They no, they did They still had a teacher. No, I think they had a choice. But I don't, it might not have been a, as big of a choice. Yeah, it wasn't as expensive yeah. last year. They were too well. They're the ones that did the, um, was it the fountain? Did they do a fountain or? I think, they, I think there's video photography too. This is still a yeah, presentation. Yeah. They had my sister. <coughs> I don't remember. I'm just wondering well, if it's the same program. It was STEM. So but this is billed as like a career exploration. Yeah. So it's different things in their career center to give them a taste of, of what offerings are and what the, what's out there to become interested in. And it's June 29th, it's June 25th to the 29th. So it's coming up quickly. Just make sure you have all the information for the next meeting. I'm going to make a motion right now. Right here and now. Right here. Right now. I'm going to make a motion. Um, to allocate $2,500 towards the Cheshire Career Center camp to include scholarship opportunities and busing for the four days. $2,500? Yes. However that gets All right. divvied up. Then I'll second that. There's more. I'm just, um, I don't now. have enough information. I mean, it sounds great, but I don't, it's not on the agenda. Not any discussion other than. It's a report come, that came back from a committee, so. What yeah. committee? Uh, the finance committee. Well, it was what we discussed with Alicia. I mean, I, I made the motion, the motion doesn't have to carry, but I will make it again. Well, I mean, the $2,500 was the original number. If, yep. more than, if there's more interest shown and, we need, and 20, more than $2,500 is needed, you can come back, we can come back to the next meeting. Mm -hmm. I'm comfortable okaying $2,500 if, you know, obviously there has been interest there and that looks like the, close to the number that's going to be needed. Is there any more discussion on the motion? There's no second. I second. Yeah, I have a second. Can I just clarify that it's $45 per student? I just found the website. Okay. 
What did you say? It's forty-five dollars per student mm -hmm. rather than seventy-nine. Is there, is there a registration by any chance? Uh, registration is already open. Is there a deadline? Mm -hmm. I don't see a deadline. The headline does say there are still some spots available. Well, that's even better because if it's only forty-five, then even more scholarship mm -hmm. opportunity would be available. So it gone out to the kids. Yes. yes. It is. <coughs> what else is going Opportunity for students to have a little more enrichment. What's the, what's the title of the program? It's the Ch Cheshire Career Center yeah. Camp. All right, all those in, I'm going to call the motion. All those in favor of funding $2,500 to send students to the Cheshire Career Center Camp for this summer. Say aye. 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 Any opposed? Two minutes. Twenty-five hundred dollars. Anything else from finance? No. Just that our next meeting is going to be on May eighteenth at five thirty. Five thirty. Yes. It's currently posted for six fifteen, but we're going to change the posting. All right, Keene High School Committee. Uh, Keene High School Committee met to talk about, um, last week we talked about some of uh, what they're doing at Keene High School as they head towards uh, graduation. Uh, our committee is meeting with their SAU uh, coming up next Wednesday afternoon at 4 o'clock in SAU. Uh, if there's anything specific the board would like us to uh, bring to the PSAU, uh, please let myself or Val know. Um, we'll be talking about uh, special education. We'll be talking about uh, their North Campus. There's, we've heard some rumors that uh, their North Campus will be closing. So we have some questions about that. So next Wednesday. Not that. Oh, no. Excuse me, never mind. Okay. Uh, legislative action policy. I know we have a meeting coming up soon, don't we? We did not schedule <coughs> a policy meeting. We didn't? We did not. We didn't have all the members there at the time, so we didn't have that very scheduled. Do we want to schedule a meeting now? Sure. Mondays didn't work well. How uh, about Monday the 8th at 5 o'clock? Mm -hmm. I mean, Monday the 8th. That's my birthday. That's my birthday. I'll come over. I'll come over. Trump's the uh, day off. <laughs> uh, how about? Do the following week. 15th? 15th at 5 o'clock? Sure.
to start thinking about the scholarship recipients, and she said there were several Winchester students who had filled out forms and were would be considered for various Good. scholarships and team. Good. Excellent. I mean, I was you know getting back to goals. That was definitely one of our goals to make sure that. All the Winchester students who attend Keene High School were involved with filling out scholarship forms. Anything else, Val? No, nope, that's it. Right, board group. I just wanted to add, we met the, for our teachers union and chose three recipients. You already did that. Yes. yes. Did you tell Christy? Mm -hmm. Did you tell Christy Frazier? I think so. Did you tell Christy? No, I don't think so. No. Okay. Uh, select Board Representative Lindsay's going on Wednesday. Sick Bank. Steve, got anything? Uh, professional Development. <coughs> we had a meeting <coughs> last week. We, we met, Val and I. Um, and I was educated on where the teachers are right now with their Google training. Mm -hmm. Google Docs. Yeah. Um, they're embracing it. Going very well, Keene State, as we've been collaborating with, and this was free training that they've been providing us through multiple collaborations. This just accumulated in, in uh, opportunity for training on Google Docs. The teachers have had two trainings on website. Oh, two trainings on website. Two yeah. trainings on website, and then one training for Docs. Docs in general. general. Yeah. So there's one more training scheduled. <laughs> we can schedule another meeting during that. Did we have another meeting? Um, okay. Those. 
um, we have to start thinking about screen entity. Said we have to start thinking about screens, right? Right. So we have, we don't have any screens that have completely failed. We do have some screens where um, Julie describes it as when you press re repeatedly in the same spot. So teachers tend to stand in the same area, or they set up things for students to do in the same it's area. Worn out. Board, yeah. So that area can, after time, become kind of worn out. Um, and so some people are experiencing where they do a straight line across the board and squiggles, <laughs> or a certain part on the line that, I mean, on the board where it won't take the pen, so it looks like they've skipped it. Um, and so those things are starting to happen. So Julian's saying in the next two years, we need to be thinking about um, what's next yeah. and how are we funding that. Yeah, we, we, have, we, we really have to start thinking about what is next now, yeah, because this is old technology right now. Um, the town has a grant writer, and I'm hoping that the town can help us out when it comes to writing a grant to maybe replace every single smart board. Um, because I know the majority of the smart boards came from a grant that was, that came from a, an old technology director, I can't remember. But they were grants. Uh, now the school uses this product in every single classroom. So we have to make sure that it remains in every single and so we talked about, uh, Julian spoke about not wanting to change the software required for teachers to use because that's hours of training and, and money in training. So his recommendation was to stick with something that would continue to take the smart software. Right. So, I mean, that's a big, that's a big project. I mean, that is another, might be something under the topic of goals for the board. But. I just don't want it to come to a situation where we have to start taking the smart boards down in our classrooms or we're not replacing them with anything. It's my belief that if a classroom has a piece that's used for education, it shouldn't go backwards. It should always be there for that class and classes coming up as well. We've had some teachers say the day that the smart, the smart board leaves and the overhead projector comes back into their classroom is the day they retire. Well, order two light bulbs for the <laughs> projector. And try finding those on. Yeah. We get a lot of storage. No, I, I, I asked Don before I even ordered them. All right, energy conservation facilities. Uh, the only thing <coughs> energy conservation, we're looking forward to meeting with the uh, new proposal from this revision solar. About some solar panel and talking to, I can't remember the guy's name, and it walks us in with a low rate of electricity. Oh, Bob Hayden. Bob Hayden. Meeting with him, hopefully. Excellent. Okay, any citizens' comments? Yes. Yes. I'm Emily Henderson, and I'm one of the kindergarten teachers here. I have two questions. I'm informed. I've never heard of a lead policy before. How do how does the staff um, benefit from the lead screening information? The idea is the kids have to come in with the doctors and say they have had the lead uh, screening. It's nothing you have to. The teachers won't be screening for the lead. It will just be part of the uh, medical requirement to attend school. And how or why does that lead screening? require documentation over any other medical diagnosis. It isn't over any, over anything, it's in addition. Is there any privacy concerns about reporting that type of medical, um, issues? It's with the, the health negative? report that you get, that we would get from the doctors. Just curious, have you heard that before? Why would that take precedence over maybe something else that would be in a medical file? If there's anything else, well, we would get a lead screening report, maybe not something else that would be in there. Yeah, it's just to indicate that the lead screen what has been done. We just oh. need the doctor to say yes, that has been done. Um, my second question is, is that if the district moves forward on purchasing a bus, and which obviously will be a driver, and if it goes in the direction of special education transportation, since all students who ride a special education <coughs> bus are supported by an IEP, does that driver become part of the support staff association or a district? 
that would be a discussion to have. I, mean, I know that I know that topic has come up before when, um, when we were researching whether or not we wanted to jump like into the deep end and do a you know have our own. When we had our consultant, <coughs> uh, he said that is something that you definitely have to consider if you're going to start doing any sort of transportation. So we put it in the So I just didn't know if that was considered a decision. Yes, Ms. Brown. I, I have a question about the buses. Um, some years ago, when, when the board was researching having our own buses, one of the main um, surprises for um, the cost of the buses was the either weekly or not, um, every two weekly um, safety inspection for the brakes. So did you calculate that? Yeah, our superintendent in a report that was brought to the board a couple of months ago worked in maintenance into the um, into his report. Um, I don't know if it was specifically what was inspection, it? oil, tire, major tune-up, the tune-up. Well, it wasn't general maintenance. No, that's not what I'm talking about. You're talking about safety inspection. Yeah, relationship. Well, yes. Well, it's associated with soft costs. Okay. Yeah. It really was surprising because um, it was almost weekly or every other week. Not just you know now it's time to go after the brakes. It was it was required and it was either weekly or every two weeks or something like that. It's very surprising. Right, based on mileage. Yeah, I didn't. Yeah, based on mileage. And I believe we had somebody in town who was yeah ready to help us to take the time. I think they must have figured it out because the access fee must come under that, but maybe they're not. I don't, I don't know. know. That's access. That's access. So then my other question is is on the compassionate leave donation. I would like to please know, um, some of us, if we're at 150 and then we have more, that there's a, there are 10 new days between the 150 and the 160, are we able to donate days that are, are above the 150 that we would normally lose by the end of June? Yes. I would just like, I, I would, it's okay if you can't answer it tonight, but I would like to know yes. if I have more than 150, um, can I donate as a, as an employee, can I do, donate more than the 150 because I know that we are able to keep a, a crew that is 10 during the year, but we lose that 10 because we can't go over with. Yes, yes. You can. You're in, the answer is yes. Okay, great. Thank you. Anything else for citizens' comments? Yes. Uh, Barbara, did you? Um, first of all, I want to thank the administration and the board and those that helped this week with our staff appreciation. Um, we always go above and beyond, and it was a delight to see this week again um, how well we treat, try to treat our staff, and I appreciate the many people that were involved in that. Um, also, secondly, was I was glad I came to this meeting tonight because it was nice to see the administration and the board and, and um, how we rally behind one of our staff members when they had unexpected um, life issues their families. It, again, it reminds me that this is a family and this this school really takes care of its own. And and the third thing is, and I already posted it, uh, about Jeans Day tomorrow. I love wearing Jeans Day every Friday. That's great. But when it's for a, one of our own houses, when we can put the administration, it's a plea out there saying, we'll match that of challenges. But it's a winner. That, Again, it makes me so proud to work here. Um, it makes me want to try to do more, more recruit people to get here. I mean, I do, but another reason why I want to. Um, so I wanted to thank you for what you're trying to do for our school and our staff. And um, invite you all to our next PTA meeting this Monday night at 6 p.m. Um, uh, we, uh, the new officers will be, will be talking about some of their goals and some of the things. And um, we also will be going over our goals because we don't want to just be people that meet 
we want to have a purpose for meeting. So if you'd like to come this Monday at 6 here in the library, um, you're all welcome. Uh, Anything else for citizens' comments? Hello. Hi, I'm Lonnie McCompton, and I just can't let this go. I heard you say that you're, you finished up with your last lice check of the year, that was school-wide or elementary school-wide lice check. Um, I know the recommendation came out years ago. It's at least five years, if not more, that that um, is not something that is promoted by the New Hampshire School Board. Association or the Department of Ed. And I know that Kevin just talked about progress, that you go with progress. And it wasn't something they just pulled out of the air. It's evidence-based research that that is not something that will decrease your um, children that get head lice in the school system. And I was a school nurse in the King School District for 21 years. I just retired. And I certainly became a target when we put that recommendation into practice. And we no longer did school-wide head lice checks after vacations. I had two schools. I was checking thousands of kids a year. And um, it promotes a false sense of security, number one. You're not going to be able to 100% guarantee that every time you check a head one um, after school vacation, or that's going to increase your uh, population of head lice. And I was the target. I think the I spent at least two or three years with very angry teachers, so I know how they feel about this, believe me. It's not that we don't check a child. If we find there's one after school, we check them individually, we talk to the parent, that kind of thing, we check them afterwards just to make sure. But um, it is evidence-based research that that is no longer recommended that you do those. Okay. You should revisit that. I don't think that presentation and you decided no matter what the recommendation was, you weren't going to follow it. Yeah, I mean, basically, in school policy right now, we can always revisit that policy. Uh, um, is there a policy? There is a policy committee. There is a policy committee. We could always revisit that policy. Um, I'd like the policy myself. Going well, sure, you here. Well, that, and, uh, <laughs> I've had to take days off because my kid has been sent home because. And if there's evidence that something's happening, your child will get sent home probably, but school wide. I'm just saying. Yeah, evidence based, you are in education. <laughs> That's how you develop your first I'm not in education. You promote your education. Um, so you need to look at evidence based in another area of your school. Any other comments for tonight? Jimmy, you're not public? I do. I do. Um, RC 91A3. Actually, A, but I would like this rice to stay. I think Everyone else? A. 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 I'll make a motion to move into uh, non public 91A3A. Okay. Second. Oh. 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 Good girl. Yeah, I know. I hear about it. Ten seconded. Well, so yes. Yeah. Yes. 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 Yes.